Hey guys, and welcome to Crypt Monkey Paints in the evening again, where we've, we've got all the shades pulled because it's dark. <laughs> but we are here and I have coffee <laughs> and Ty has a green screen attacking him. I'm, I'm like showing my guitar over here and stuff. Uh, yeah. You gonna die? Um, yeah. What are you hoping for? No. So Ty's fighting with the green screen. I'm fighting with the mic. And so, yeah, it's fun times. And Sutter says, lately all, the, lately all I've been able to do is lurk during lunch and fly, fly, flight layovers. Wow, my speech is done for the day. Okay, guys, so we're out. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hopefully we sound all okay because uh, we, we both kind of shoved our mics out of the way. Are you going to die? I think so. Like some serious stuff has changed. I'm going to have to look at, I think. Like it looks like it's going to just go thunk. I mean, I guess it's seeing over here in the corner is better than seeing the living room over here, right? I, I guess, but it seems like it's still going to fall over. Like, is it because you were messing with the guitar? Is that what's happening? No, it's, I think it's because, uh, so one of the things that's new tonight is, uh, the layout looks the same but i'm hoping it looks clearer to everyone yeah hopefully uh, sharper because we've increased our resolution um uh so that's probably why i have some weird stuff like fun times oh tacos we're actually doing taco wednesday yes yeah, taco wednesday i forgot to get the beef out to defrost so anyway tonight is all about back to the basics because forever ago i did kind of going over the the typical like beginner stuff so hopefully tonight i will be able to answer a bunch of questions or any questions that anybody has um and i'm going to cover some some fun stuff so let's start because there's a lot but not a lot to go over <laughs> does that help <laughs> so i have an array of crap in front of me a um, couple of different things so basically that i can kind of demonstrate different things on different models in different stages so that nope nope lost that sentence it started really really well and then it got away from me so awesome sauce this is why i'm drinking coffee but i'm just gonna jump in then fix it my guitar is gone your guitar has gone away. Did you make your picture size smaller? I did. <laughs> so I have my trusty, rusty palette. Um, I do not have my wet palette out because I don't tend to use one. Um, I highly recommend it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try so hard to not say um again. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see how that goes. My child. No more of that word. Uh. I stopped myself. That doesn't. It, uh, I said not, um. it's not the same. <laughs> I don't tend to use a wet palette. I do like to use a wet palette whenever I am painting something large that I'm going to need all of my. Uh... Damn it! I almost read that out loud, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> I whenever I'm going to be mixing a lot of colors and doing wet blending and things like that, I like to have my wet palette out just so that I can keep all of those colors fresh. And a wet palette is exactly what it sounds like. It is a palette that has a sponge underneath. I am struggling to not say it. And then it has basically parchment paper, sort of paper over the top of that. And the it's a paper that's thin enough. It's not regular paper, but it's a paper thin enough to let the moisture from the sponge or paper towels, whatever underneath, keep the paint itself fresh. So I do use that when I'm doing something larger. But when I'm going to knock something out or not have a lot of paint, that sort of thing, I just kind of go. And I like my little fun palettes. It's a paper plate for, for Halloween for 88 cents for 10 of them or 12 of them, whatever the pack of it. Is. But I think they're fun and it's good enough. My number one favorite thing to use, paper towels. I, I tend to use these as 
palettes more than my actual like this is technically my paint holder this is what i use for palettes my biggest trick my biggest thing that has made my life wonderful is my water bucket i have water here that's obviously nasty that's where i wash my brushes but it has two more little pieces and i'm tilting not on i'm purposely not tilting this um it has two more little cavities where what you're supposed to do is you wash your brush and it's got a slotted thing in here that will beat your brush up and then you can lay your brush in like this and it can drip down and catch the water i don't do that what i do is i wash my brush in here when i need water to thin out my paints this is my darker side and when i need water to thin out my paints this is my lighter side so this is my cleanest water over here this is my nasty water and this is my eh, it's okay water <laughs> and i try to keep them that way while i'm painting and i also dump this out every night try to try i was like what did you just say <laughs> i try to sometimes i realize you know i'm like okay it's super late when we stream on saturday and sunday i'm a lot better about it because i'm not falling asleep at the end of it but um samwise says you beat the devil out of it it uh, beat yes. the devil out of it as the great Bob Ross teaches. Yes, yes. And uh, again from the great Bob Ross, when it comes to mini painting, it's your world. Do what you want. Make it what you want. If you're not happy with it, start over. That is the beautiful thing about thin layers. If you keep your layers thin, you can keep the texture of the mini there while building up the colors. So as you layer on and layer on and put more and more of that same color it gets stronger and stronger so what you can do is go in a smaller 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 section and by doing that you're building up a natural highlight that will actually be a really nice gradient so it's not this i have shadow here light color here highlight here you have a gradient down between those things this is of course where i fail in many painting because i walk in the room with a four inch brush and to paint the wall and i'm like yeah. that look <laughs> so not a great size for mini painter main mini painting unless you're doing something like this and you need to oh i think autofocus is on oh i bet it is i will work on that you go for it yes so if I'm painting something like this and I just need to get a big chunk of color down, then I can use a brush like this. I'm still not going to use really thick. Uh, damn it. That was one. <laughs> I'm still not going to go really thick with my paint because I don't want to lose all these little cracks and crevices. I mean, he literally has dents. Oh, I got to be over here. He literally has dents in his... Um, I'm just Dude. checking my focus so you won't stay there. That looks okay, pretty good. good, huh? Yes, that's fine because that's uncomfortable to paint over there. Oh, no. I want to be over yeah, there. You're fine. And I think I'm actually going to adjust my camera a little bit because this is where I want to paint and I'm like taking up that section. So go for it. You guys um, are going for a ride. Sam Weiss says that's two. I, I'm sorry. Sam Weiss said, um, that's two. <laughs> I am trying. It's just not going to be awesome. So, a couple of things. Like I said, I've, I've got things in different stages so that I can show different, like, literally no paint at all. There's, there's not even a base coat on this. <laughs> I know, Sam. Uh, there's not even a base coat on this. It, it's just pure resin. This one is, oh, let's, let's go in order, shall we? This one has a base coat of paint. She's, uh, I wanted her to have a lot of red armor, so she's pretty much covered in red. And then I wanted her to have kind of a, a gray hair. So I've got, you know, a nice gray kind of going around her face and hair. Um, damn it. This guy has his base coat done to where like this is where i start where i just kind of slap some paint on it right 
get everything into basically one tone. Then I start going in and cleaning up. So he's got his skin tone on, he's got his gray axe, he's got the the darker gray on his pants, the black on his boots and his gloves. Uh, the other thing, I, I kind of stopped that one, is that like a half a one? I do want to point out about his, uh, mm -hmm. his mask, is you can see that he's got, you know, eye holes, obviously. So that looks really nice and crisp and clean. I didn't do that really detailed. Basically, I took his skin tone and I slapped it across where his eyes are. I just went slap, slap, slap. Because what I did then was come back in with the black and clean it up, which is way easier than trying to get inside that little hole. There's no reason I can cover it up with black because I'm going really thin on the paint. Uh -huh. So I can easily fix it. So I've got him where he's got the gray kind of on his shackles and his sword, or not sword, that's av absolutely not a sword. That is a freaking battle axe. I've got the, you know, the dark gray on, on those areas. So he's got his you know, slap color all over it and then start getting the right colors in the right areas. And I left this on purpose where you can see. So this is after multiple layers of his skin tone. And this is one layer where it's splotchy looking. So I did that on purpose so that you'd see like one layer doesn't do it. You know, when you go with these thinner layers, you're going to have to do multiple. But it is absolutely worth it because he his veins still there. He's got, you know, the, the veins and his muscles. Oh, you can still see those veins popping through. So thin layers. Do work. This is the base for her. She goes, where's her feet? Right there. So she goes right there. But I thought the base, I'm going to keep to, ba to basic stone looking. And then this is obviously sand over here. But this is a really nice big area where you can see dry brushing really clearly. And you'll see it happen really quickly. So that's why that base is here. And then Mr. Pumpkinhead is actually almost done. He's got his base coat down, his highlights and, and everything, his shadowing and everything. So basically he needs white teeth and his eyeball done and then a few little fun details. So kind of... You know, stage one, stage, stage one, stage two, stage three, stage four, I forgot to talk about him, and stage five. <laughs> so he's got, his base is actually completely done. This is one of those models that doesn't stand up very well on its own or on uh, a holder. So getting the base done, getting his feet done, and then gluing him down allows me to simply hold him by his base, and it's, it's a lot easier to work on it. He's got all of his base coat down, and then he's got his highlights on his skin down. So now I'm at the stage where I can uh, do the shading of him. So. Oh. This is why he doesn't still stand, stand up well. He keeps he grabs onto things. Right. So I dropped him. I painted him and then I dropped him and I broke his finger and I glued his finger on and it glued on really, really well. And then when I was dry brushing his finger, that went flying again. <laughs> so I don't care about his finger. He's not getting it back this time. Kind of a jerk. Okay. So at this point, I'm going to start with this guy because one of the other things oh and my multitude of brushes so you can see i have a bunch of different brushes i don't use all of them sometimes i will literally pick up one brush and start to finish besides an eyeball use that one brush other times you'll see i've got like 50 million dirty brushes because i pick one up i don't like it i put it down it just depends on my mood. So 
I want to start with getting this brown because that's like the only other thing that I haven't done there. You never did get your cup, did you? I did, yes. It's right here. And oh. I've taken three, three or four sips of it. Okay. I was talking about my coffee earlier. Yeah, I think I'm going to finish mine and get some water soon. Blah. Too late for coffee. You're the one that wanted it. <laughs> I said, do you want coffee? And you're like, hmm, I don't know. I'm like, if you make a pot, I'll drink a cup with you. And then you're like, oh, cool. And you make coffee. <laughs> Not the way I remember it. Never how you remember, but that's okay. So you can see that this doesn't even coat all of it in one go. But I am absolutely okay with that. The reason I want to start with this guy is because there's going to be a lot more things done on him. That's good. No, you're fine. There's going to be a lot more done on him just because there's a lot more things that can be done on him, so to speak. So one of the things that I have struggled with learning and doing is putting a coat and leaving it alone. Let it dry before I try to do the next thing. So by any all means, feel free to jump in and ask any questions at any time, even if that's not exactly what I'm working on. I will happily, and that's why I have kind of a multitude of, of models over here that I can mess with. So I can demonstrate as I need to, or as you guys need me to, rather, so that I can... Uh, and not mess up the stage that I'm on on something else. Yes, I will randomly stop talking because of details. <laughs> like, I don't want to hit his skin right there. So. So one of the things we, we've got that we need to do probably this week, maybe before this week, uh, we still never put a poll up with our... We only needed to choose, like, I think one more model. Yep, and I picked them all. Okay. I just so literally haven't given them to you. We hit the 135 followers on um, Twitch, and we just need to actually get you guys the poll now so we can decide what we'll give away at 150 followers. Am I saying that? Yeah, subscribers yes. on Twitch is the, yeah. So followers, that's what I mean. 150 will be given away whatever wins the poll that you choose. Hopefully we can get that done in the next day or two so that people have some time. And maybe by Saturday, Sunday, something like that. Announce what that's going to be. Samwise says, uh, so, and for anybody that doesn't know, Samwise is rock fan. You've heard, heard us talking about rock fan before. Samwise says, so do you put the base coat on the entire mini or only the sections the color is prominent? So that is not really a yes or no question. So there's a few different ways that I do base coats. I'm giving my... I was going to say, nobody can see that, but you are giving I, your hair, your brush a haircut here. My hair, my hairbrush, my... Uh, the brushes will get random ones that go up too high and it'll hit a part of, part of the model and it'll piss me off. So I randomly give my hair, my paint brushes a haircut. So to answer your question, uh, if I am base coating with a, with spray can, I'm just spraying the whole damn thing. If I am base coating with a brush, then I will primarily stick to the area that is that color. Um, it, I'm actually I'm not doing too bad. I'm not too, I'm not I'm not disappointed in myself. So like on her, I knew that all of her leather, all of her armor 
was going to have a red kind of leather tone to it. So there was no sense in trying to be super careful and get only only get the red in one place. I, I didn't care where the red got, and I just used a spray primer. Um, it is a it is a primer, but you absolutely don't need to prime when you're talking about resin. It you know it will go straight on the model. I have no paint on my brush. <laughs> So it will not go on the model if you don't have paint on your brush. But you can see that it will go straight on there and not try to, for any of you who have painted plastic miniatures, you'll know the paint will actually try to peel away from that. But it goes on. Obviously, it's thin, but that's because that's what kind of paint I have. Um, but... I don't try to, when I'm doing my base colors, I will actually over coverage my area. So like this is a really good example of that. These spikes are going to be metal spikes, but rather than trying to be super careful with his skin tone and not hit those spikes, I actually bring it up onto the spike on purpose. That way, if I miss an area when I'm going down on the spike and covering it, or the metal portion, then it's his skin tone and it's not this blaring gray or black or weird color. It looks like part of it. Uh, I've, I've realized in the past I'll be almost done and there's this one tiny little area that I missed and it just is like blinding to me. That's the only <laughs> part of the mini that I see. So when I'm actually doing my base colors and you can see like this is another good example this black strap right here the underside of this black strap is his skin tone i much rather have that skin tone there and then come back and put the right color over that skin tone once i've got it that skin tone done family says okay i saw a lot of vids where they stress primer but i guess that's the plastic produced minis so a lot of people stress primer regardless of the type of miniature and that is priming your minis is never going to hurt you doing it it's a really good habit to have honestly it's one of those things that if you're slapping 15 tons of paint on that's a bad thing because you're going to lose all your details like I said, when, you know, he's got these little groove or these little words are not happening. I wasn't looking, so I don't even know what to... Dense. Ripples? Ripples. He's got these ripples, right? He's got these areas that are low lying, and then he's got the big muscles that are popping out. If I just keep slapping coat after coat after coat, or I just take, you know, and just glob this paint on there, it's going to fill in... You were actually no, 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 no. I'm not going to actually do it because I really like this model. I don't want to do yeah. it. But if I just globbed on the the brown right here, you wouldn't see that horse that is down inside there. You would lose the veins on his skin. So priming is never a bad habit to have. So if you want to prime, prime. It's just a step that can be skipped when you are talking about resin in particular. Uh, if you're talking about metal, never skip that. Because it will... Priming a metal miniature allows the paint to stick to something. The primer is meant to stick to the metal. The paint sticks to the primer. First mini I ever painted was metal. And guess what? Half of it is gone now. But that's okay. I just don't ever touch that model again. Because it, I'll literally, every time I touch it, I'll just flake paint off of it. So I'm never going to say you should not prime. You're absolutely, it's a wonderful habit to have. But it is a step you can skip when you have the right material. So if you look right now, all I have on my palette is the brown and the, the skin tone which is actually skeletal bone so 
in order to start doing his highlights, I want to go up one level from the paint that he has. And that's going to be my mummy robes. It's just a lighter, it, it's not quite white. It looks white compared to the skeletal bone. You can see it on his hat right there. But it's not like bright, bright white. Excuse me. And occasionally you'll see me washing my brush random. Like I'm still going to use the same color. But I also, you'll feel your brush start to get thick. And it's the best way I can describe it. When that starts happening, just wash your brush and get that extra excess paint out of it. So, and I don't, you can, let's see, you can't really see that. Like you can see, I have a drop of paint on there. I like to always have a wet brush. It's not dripping paint any, or dripping water anymore. But let's see if I can see. Yeah, you can see it's wet, but it's not dripping even if I do this. Um, so all I'm going to do is kind of, mix in between and this is a lot of what i do is just in between the two paints mix the two until i like the color and that's literally how scientific i'm i can get i like it it looks good i'm gonna move on so now all i'm gonna do is as i'm highlighting i'm gonna do this on the back of my hand so you can see it really clearly as I'm building up his highlights, I want to only hit those high spots. So the first couple of times that I'm doing paint, I'm basically going to hit an area like this. Obviously not that large, and it's going to depend on where his muscles are bulging, right? Then the next time, I'm going to get a little bit more of the lighter color on my brush than, than the mix. And I'll do, let's say, an area more like that you know and then i'll have a little bit more of the lighter color and i'll do an area like that then i'll basically be in my just my bright area and i'll do an area like that obviously i'm building up on this same area over and over again but as i'm going this center spot is going to be the absolute brightest but i that's where i have that gentle graduation between the colors so I don't end up with black, brown, white, which doesn't look natural. Did you uh, read this last one already? I haven't read any of them. Okay. Same way says, my dad did body work and I did wood shop, so I knew primer was important for some material, mm -hmm. but less steps indulge my tendency to rush. <laughs> I wish that uh, would get me to stop rushing. So one of the things that has really helped my tendency to rush, because I, I do like, oh, this isn't dry yet. Um, okay, I'm going to go to the next step anyway, and then I ruin it. Or it's like, it's not as good as it could have been. Um, basically, what I do, what's really helped me is a couple of things. One, having a larger model, like like these guys, where I can, you know, I'm waiting for this to be ready for the next step. I'm going to work on his skin or having an array of models around me where I'm working on this guy. Okay, he's got to dry. Pick this up. Okay, this has got to dry. Pick this up. Okay, this has got to dry. Now I can go back to him again. So having an array of things to pick from can help that uh, rushing area or rushing tendency. Mm -hmm. But uh, also having a larger model where you can move from area to area and not rush the same spot really kind of helps. So you can see I'm really just picking out the bulgy, the bulky areas on him. And I'm not hitting down in the grooves. And it doesn't really look like I'm doing anything. I know it, it doesn't look like it on camera, but guess what? It doesn't to me either. I can see where I'm hitting. Because it looks slightly different. 
but it's that's that's what we want is the slightly different because that's going to give us the general or the gentle radiation rather than shadow light done which is also totally okay if you want to get things you know okay i've got this now i'm going to you know i've got the base coat down now i just want to get rough highlights down that's where you pick up your big um dry brush and you dry brush all of your highlights on sawdust dragon says later y'all thanks for the company while i waited bye you, enjoy your flight be safe on your flight So, I just realized my uh, palette is kind of the same color as my model. <laughs> so, oops. I, uh, and yes, I. one of the reasons that I really like having gloves on is one, it protects my hands, and two, I don't have to feel guilty about painting on my hands. You mean picked on when I yes. start jeering at you for it? Samwise says, get those free flight snacks. <laughs> <laughs> so now I'm just mixing in more of the white. I say white, but it's mummy robes. And this process works no matter what colors you're using. It's all about picking the colors that you want for the look you want. It's it's nothing to do with like this is only going to work for this particular color scheme. That's that's not a not the case. It's more about learning this is how you can work this sort of thing. And then once you have that that brush technique down, then what you're painting Ice chair is making a weird noise as it turns. What you're painting and the colors you're painting doesn't matter. If that makes sense. I hope it does. I think it's his chair. Otherwise, his mic is making a weird noise. But I don't think he can hear me anymore. And I'm just hitting a smaller and smaller area each time. I think your chair is making a squeaky noise. Otherwise, your, your mic is like making a, a staticky noise. Oh? Somebody say that? No, I'm, I could hear it. Unless I hear it, I can't really help with that. I think it was your chair because it stopped now. It probably was. Cranking it around so I could recline during your work. See how it's just like I'm just picking out the really high spots now. Even though I haven't changed the... And you can tell how thin my paint is considering like I'm still making brush strokes without having gone back to my palette at all. Not terribly concerned about these spots because I'm going to make those look gross. Okay, now I am and I had dripped water on my palette. That's why you see me brushing over here. I'm literally grabbing that water that I had dropped. That's where I go to my really clean water. But you can see how watery I like my paint. That got a little... Oh, I can't see. No. Way over here. Um, but you can see how thin I like my paint when I do it on my hand. 
That was Ty's phone making noises. He does, but it's still funny. Little Miss Georgie's light just. Miss Georgie went to the vet today. Oh, timer. yeah, the new timer is going to be here. Oh, good. Yeah, sorry, go ahead. Little Miss Georgie went to the vet today because she's been acting funny. Apparently, she's a little daredevil, which I already knew that. She, like, jumps off of things, uh, and she has broken her wrist. Yeah, it's not the puppy. It's uh, Georgie the bearded dragon. Yes, Georgie is our bearded dragon. That's fine. Oh, you can uh, screen too. Uh, but yeah, she uh, decided to. Well, she always she she likes jump. We used to have a hammock in there. Yeah, we had. And she liked to climb up it and then jump down. Yeah. She hasn't been jumping lately. So. Yeah, she lost her her hammock privileges. She broke broke her wrist. She broke her wrist. Yeah. Got to not have anything to climb on for a while. So I just realized I was completely ignoring his chest. Pam says, still said she's not feeling one hundred percent. Yeah, I'm thinking she's gonna be all right in about a month. She does have medicine, so well, she'll she'll get better, and she is moving around better. Already. I'm going to turn that to the light. For Georgie. Look at things. Are <laughs> Oh. That got me a little bit. Hello, Regina. Hi, Regina. So. Luckily, his chest is not that large. Not that you're not buff, my man. You are. I'm just <laughs> saying, like, his back definitely takes up more time. And again, like I said, this this process, doing the paint like this, nice and thin and multiple coats, works in so many different ways. So we're going to set him down and be good. We're going to pick up his or her base, his base. Or yes, this lady's base, because a really quick way to do the highlights would be to take I'm going to take ash gray on this one. So that's how you can do really smooth transition highlights. Here's how you can do super fast highlights. So I like makeup brushes for my dry brushes. And I have a multitude of... Oops, sorry, oh. guys. I'm trying a different setup. I've got my brushes on this side now because I kept hitting my mic. My, my water was so far back that I would keep hitting my mic with my water or my brushes. The brushes are on that side, water's on this side. We're seeing how that works. But anyway, so nice smooth transition between lights and darks. Now we're going to do dry brushing. So I am loading up my brush, and then I'm going to beat the devil out of it. So... Regina asks, what color would you use to highlight a darker brown wooden branch? So, oh, what I like to do when I'm doing wood like that, Regina, is I will do a multitude of different browns, especially for something like a tree that doesn't have one tone. So what I like usually end up doing is I put like three or four different shades on my palette and I will bounce back and forth between using them and I typically don't wash my brush while I'm doing that 
so that I get those different tones flowing on the wood, which I actually have wood right here. So I will work on that here in a minute when I'm done dry brushing this. So I've gotten a bunch of paint on my dry, my brush. And now I'm going to do this. And you can see that there's barely anything. When I, it's literally gray and it's nothing coming off. But when I beat the crap out of it and let me see, maybe. Is that making a noise? Oh, I wasn't looking. I'm sorry. Okay. Well, I am hitting very hard. You can see how much I'm spreading my brush. I'm hitting very, very hard on this. And here's the trick about dry brushing. I will do that. Load my brush up, beat it out again. I will do this where I beat the ever living. You can again, you can see how hard I'm pushing on my brush itself. And what I'll do is the next shade up that I do, like this is a really light gray. So what I may do next is just straight up white. And I'll hit it very, very lightly. Then you'll see the difference in the brush, how the brush behaves. Talk about what that brush is. Makeup brush, yes, okay. I did. I'm not terribly concerned about hitting any of this area because texturally you can see this is stone and this is sand. So I'm going to come back and make this all look like sand. So I'm really not going to mess with it at all. But again, you can see I'm really shoving the living crap out of my brush. <laughs> I'm beating the ever I'm beating the devil out of it. On the piece. <laughs> and whenever it's not giving me enough, I come in, but I'm still getting it off. Okay. So now I'm gonna get straight up white over here. Now you'll see the difference in how I treat the actual brush. I'm still going to do loading my brush up, still going to beat it off on the, that doesn't change. What's going to change now is how lightly I'm touching the model. And you'll see, I'm going to be doing this. And you can see my brush bristles barely move because I don't want to hit. I don't want too much white on there. And the, the beauty of this is exactly the same as what we were doing with the other model, where we can go over it again and again and add more white to it. But it's difficult to, to take that away. So we want to, I'm being like super, super gentle here. Whereas I was beating the ever living crap out of it with the other one. Because I just, I want the white highlights, but I don't want them super, super strong. And that gives us the really dark gray still shows through the lighter, the gray that the ash gray that we were just using still shows through. And the white is just on those really, really rough spots. And then for those of you who've been here, you know, my favorite thing to do in anything that is stone is add green. Because that's going to be our, um, our moisture areas are going to have mold. They're going to have lichen. Whatever. <laughs> They're going to have, you know, plant plant growth and it just kind of adds a whole nother layer so if you have if you have this it freaking works like i love this shit i love it love it love it i bought this bottle i don't even know how long ago i bought it so long ago you can't actually read the whole name because it's spilled over uh it's slime Something light. I can't read in the in-between word. SKD52 says, so when dry brushing, the more times you brush, the darker it will get. Opposite. 
The more times you brush with dry brushing, you're building up the highlights. So the more you brush, the lighter and lighter it gets. So start once around and add if you want it darker, lighter. lighter. Mm -hmm. Yes. If I'm, you know what? I'm not going to use this because I use this all the time. This is very liquidy and you just dab it on. That's all you do. I use this all the time. I hate you so much, Tyler. If you don't have this, you can use a nice olive green. I've got an angel green. So what I will do is put that on my palette and I'm going to add a little bit of my brown to it to kind of deepen it up. So what I'll do is I'll put it in the crevices. And I just kind of use my finger to smudge it around. A little brighter green than I like to start with. That's why I'm mixing the brown in. I don't actually have an olive green right here in my reachable. But one of the fun things is you kind of start off like this and then you can build up to a brighter and brighter green. But that will give us some worn look and some, you know, some weathered green, you know, plant growth growing on it. So this is one of my favorite things to do with rocks and stones is to add my, my moss in between the crevices. And it just gives it an, an extra little bit of life. MY says option on the Walmart acrylic paints as a starting paint. Uh, I'm sorry. That's Let a me... question. Opinion. Opinion. Opinion on the Walmart acrylic paints as a starting paint. Okay. So um, I'm going to start off by saying. Hello. Does not, absolutely, does not have to be a starter paint. I care more about what color I need than what the paint is. So the big difference here is one, when you're buying mini paints, pay attention to what you're getting, specifically when you're buying a paint designed for miniatures. So this is skeletal bone and it says nothing else, right? my coffee's in the way of my paints give me a second this one says dry rust this effects meaning it's a special effect this will make it look like rust so this is not meant to be painting the miniature just paint and paint and paint this is meant to do an effect just like my dried blood game X. You also have ah! technical that is made to do in effect, not to be used as paint. Contrast paints or speed paints are made to do the job of a layer paint and a shade paint and a highlight paint all in one. So yes, I will be using this in a few minutes <laughs> to show you how a contrast paint works. But then you have washes and inks, same thing. What it does is it sinks in and it gives you those shadows, okay? So when you're buying specific paints designed for miniatures, 
You need to pay attention. Are you getting a wash? Are you getting an ink? Are you getting a technical effect? Or are you getting a layer paint? Okay, because they they do different jobs. When you're getting this, it does one job. That's all it does. But once you understand the thickness of this compared to the thickness of this, you can make this do both of these jobs. Okay, and a dry brush paint. Uh, when I first started, I bought dry brush paint. Uh, I've never bought it since because any paint can be used as a dry brush paint. You don't need specific paints for that. I always recommend buying at least one ink or wash uh, paint so that you can understand the consistency of this paint, which is appropriately named. This is much more like ink, like those old ink wells. It's very, very watered down thin paint. The difference between watering this down and watering and just watering this down and then using this, the difference between those two is this is a cheaper paint, which is fine to paint with. That, that doesn't hurt you. But when you start watering it down, you lose the pigmentation, which is okay. You just have to be prepared for that and know that if you want something to be super bright orange, then when you're doing a wash with it, you need to be get brighter than you than you would think, basically. With especially with good brands of paint like Vallejo or Army Painter, their pigment is really, really strong. So even when I water this down even further so that I can dilute it and get it to not be as strong, my pigment is still true. So I hope that makes sense. So I have my opinions of using not, I, I don't just use this for starter paint. I use it because it's a beautiful orange and I like it. I have folk art. I have a gift from a friend. Um, this brand, can't say that name. I have the Apple Barrel paint. I have Vallejo. I have Army Painter. I have Citadel. Hate the pods. Love the paint. Hate the pods. I have Reaper. I have all kind of different brands of paint here. So I'm not going to poo poo any, any one. I hate your pods. I love your paint. I hate those pods. Uh, distraction. Cool. Oh, wood. Okay, my personal preference, I have a nice, I've got two actually good shades of brown because I've got the tan and then I've got the brown. I'm going to move some of this stuff over. So, nope, don't like that. Is that you? Because I just heard you clicking a bunch of shit. No, it was, it was creep show. Hi, creep show. Damn it. Yeah, you're in trouble, creep show. I just got blamed. So I have a pretty guard, good dark brown, and then I've got fur brown and leather brown. I just like these shades. So I've got my darkest, my lightest, and then those, these will be my, my middle tones. And yes, I tend to make a huge mess. Ow. And my white's not dry yet. Cool. I can use that still. All right, so what I like to do, I'm trying to keep my palette in view here because I don't tend to do that, but this is, I'm actually... <laughs> yeah, Creepshow says I'm used to being in trouble. He doesn't care. Yeah. Um, I'm not used to keeping my palette, but I'm trying to show you guys what I'm doing. So basically all I'm going to do is kind of randomly hit these areas with the different colors And specifically, because this is wood, I'm staying with the wood grain. Just like you would, you know, whenever you're... What's the word, Tyler? Painting? No. Staining. When you're staining wood, stay with the wood, wood grain. So I am attempting to do... I'm, I'm staying in the 
the range of my wood grain as well. And going up and down only. But again, I'm not washing my brush. I'm grabbing, going back and forth between the different colors. Um, and I'm just adding those different tones. See, the beautiful thing about this is I'm almost dry brushing at this point. See, I'm kind of pushing pretty hard. If you have a nice wood wash that you like, like I have this one's literally just called soft tone. I like this shade. So what I can do is even go into my white now really just kind of hit a couple of little spots. Now, that looks like a hot mess. It got kind of light, right? Yeah. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use this and I'll go over the entire shield. And you can hear it's very liquidy. This is a wash. So as com in comparison, you see my paints, right? I'm going to put the wash over here. Oh, you want me to? Okay. There we go. And I don't have enough wash there. So you see my wash now. Okay. So I held my paint, my my palette like this, and my paint didn't move, but my wash ran straight over. So now what I'm going to do with the wash is I'm going to go over the entire thing. And it'll sink down into the crevices. And it will coat all of the other colors. And it'll bring it all into the same color family. So it'll all be toned into one shade. <laughs> That one got me. But you, Samwise. If you look in here. Samwise figured out sounds. You can see that I've got these puddles inside where the horse is. So all I'm doing is dotting it to pull that excess out. How much? <laughs> Just a dot? Just Not a dot. lot. So what that did was that I don't want pools of it and I don't want... Um, yeah, Sam Wise learned sounds. We're in trouble. <laughs> That's okay. I don't want puddles and I don't want bubbles on either one. But now the shield is all wooden, but I have different tones throughout that wood. So that's how I like to do wood. Creepshow asks Have you played around with Army Painter Quick Shade, the one you dip the mini into? I have not. I have seen that. Um, you showed me a video on it. Well, and basically, it, it's this, it looks like a paint can. And you literally, I mean, you, you take your mini, you do all your painting, and then you grab a hold of it, and you go, thunk, pick it out, and it's done. I'm like, that's pretty cool. But no, I don't actually own any of those. So... All right, we are going to, you know what? We're going to make this metal really, really quickly. So we're going to go with gunmetal gray. And this is, again, a metallic, so it's a different type of paint. So paying attention to what you're buying matters. But it is, you can already see it's shiny. And we're literally going to dry brush this. That's it. Uh-oh. Drop the brush. <laughs> yeah. So. 
I like to always start on my edges because with dry brushing, the place you hit the most or the, the most times is going to be the brightest spot. So my edges are my sharp spot, right? That's where it gets the most use if he's any good anyway. So those are areas I want to start because I'm going to hit that same area multiple times. If you imagine, you know, those, you know, every, any metal statue in the world, right? Any metal sculpture, the parts that people walk by and rub, those are super, super shiny. Super, super shiny. <laughs> so... That's the idea here is the spots that get hit the most are going to be the spots that are shiny. So where I want it to be really shiny, I'm going to hit multiple times. And you can see like when I brush my hand, there's just not that much on there. And there's a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of people that will tell you dry brush in one direction only ever go the same direction in an area those people are smart and i do that a lot but i find myself when i'm working on a weapon i tend to not do that i'm not saying i'm right I'm just saying what i'm actually doing But especially when you're highlighting something like a body, you need to go in the same direction because you don't have light coming down and up. So I don't have the same highlights coming up that I would have coming down. So you definitely should do that. Again, that's... So actually, before I do that, you can see the difference. There's the backside we haven't touched. And there's the front that's got all those highlights just that quickly. And that's all of this. I realize there's a spot that I want to be brighter. Uh, that scarred up bit. Yeah. So basically, the more I hit the same spot, the lighter and lighter I hit that spot. I do recommend metallic paint. If you want to do armor and weapons and things like that if it's not going to be a stone weapon i definitely recommend metallics i am going to straight up recommend army painters i love this metallic set uh yeah i love their metallic set but that being said stuff that i've gotten like this uh, this is a pearl white. I find that... Uh, have fun lurking. Uh -huh. um, I find that having something like this one, I have to do more coats than I do with this. But it works. It's just I have to do this for a lot longer. E.T. Lowry says, I second Army Painters Metallics. They're good. Off to lurk. <laughs> I, I absolutely love Army Painter Metallics. They are phenomenal. Another little thing, I, I don't talk, typically mention it, but you see me putting, you'll see me look at my fingers every now and again. I'm making sure that my finger is clean before I do it. But you'll see me put my finger here. It's because I'm steadying my hand. Rather than holding my hand like this, if you remove this real quick. If you watch my hand, it will, like, if I'm not balance, brush, holding myself or balance, I'm naturally putting my finger out to balance myself. <laughs> You'll see me start to shake. So simply doing this and finding a good spot for my hand to rest, I'm sturdying, sturdying myself. <laughs> Is that what you're doing? No. I'm steady, steadying my hand is basically it. <laughs> and I think we had, we had a lot of fun. Uh, I think it was this weekend where, you know, I was painting very small details and I will literally just stop talking and I will 
like take a deep breath and <sighs> kind of work out all the kinks and like, okay, and then settle into my detail. So, um, there's, there's times to prep yourself to do those small details. So, weapon, shiny, metallic, done. The only other thing I might do, I, well, I might do, I do a lot, is I'll load up my brush. And I'm not really beating the devil out of it this time. I've kind of loaded it up and gotten most of it basically to the tip of my brush. And what I'll do is I'll come right along that edge. And I'm not brushing. I'm literally doing this on the edge of the weapon. To really give it the best shine. That's the part. That I want people to be afraid of. I mean if you've got the steady hand for it. Feel free to take a detail brush and go along there. Or you can just take the side of your brush. Touch it to it lightly. Much easier. So, weapon done. Pretty quick. Now that this is all dry, you can see the different tones. See those highlights on his mm -hmm. muscles. And we haven't even toned the whole thing. Just like what we did with, with this. We have a flesh wash that we can take over the whole thing. But to really show that, I had a special request because I have a friend who's going to be wanting to paint something gray with gray skin and know what a black wash is going to do over it. So this lovely gentleman here with the broken finger, <laughs> he has been painted gray with just a nice gray. Oh, uh, where is it? There it is. I did uniform gray all over his skin. Then I took my white and I beat the devil out of him. And broke his finger. But that gave me all these really bright white spots. Okay. Like that are realistically. As, as pretty extreme. Okay. So now. We're going to take our black wash. Our ink. Which is the same. It's different brands have different names for things. But this is my black wash. See. Mm -hmm. Nice and thin. Oh, yeah. Like ink. Looks like ink. And I am going to use a fairly good sized brush. And I will actually do this on camera. There we go. One of the things you guys see me turn to get a brush, and the re one of the reasons that takes me so long is I'm literally doing this. And if I have a really stiff brush like this, I don't want to do a wash with that because I want it to, I want the brush to flow around the areas. So that brush is too firm for this. So then I'm grabbing another brush and you can see how it's nice and soft. It bends very easily. It's much easier to feel the difference than for me to describe the difference. But this is what I'm going to use. I am going to, I literally just dipped in water. Because I always have a wet brush. Not even necessarily that you, you must do this. It's just something that I do. I started doing it from somebody else. So I was like, this is what I do. And I'm like, well, let me try it. And I just much prefer to have a wet brush at all times, no matter what kind of paint I'm using. So, dabbed in my paint. And here we go. No, I did not. So you can see how dark all of this gets. Oh my. It's so, so dark. It's incredibly dark. Oh no, it's too dark. Did you mess it up? What are we going to do? It is messed up. It seems wrong. I washed my brush. Now I'm literally wiping it away. What do you mean you washed your brush? Did you put it in water? I put my brush in water, and I just realized you guys actually can't see. Oh, you want me to back that out some? So what I did was I put my brush in water, and then onto my paper towel. 
and I'm pulling it away. And I'm knocking it off onto the paper towel. You're a witch. And now that's about the right tone. So the other way to do that, I wanted to show that's what happens if you're not sure and you put it on there and you're like, oh, oh no. <laughs> what, cal keep calm and wash your brush. SMY says, so that's what happened when I accidentally removed some of the purple on my dragon. Oh, no. So all I've done now is the exact same paint. I gathered more water. And you see, I've thinned it way down. And now I'll bring it. And it's much more what I was wanting it to do. And I can even add more black. What right in here should be like just gnarly, nasty, dark. SKD52 asks, important thing is to not let the wash dry? Yes. Even if it does, you know what? We're going to do it. We're going to bring this on. Oh, it just looks like terrifying what you're doing there. I know, I know. But I'm, I'm going to show. I'm going to let this dry before I come back to it. I'm, go I'm not going to do this on his fingers. I'm going to use the right one on his fingers because I've already broken his fingers. <laughs> I don't mess with the fingers anymore. I'm done with these fingers. <laughs> All right. So let's say that we put it on way too dark and we let it dry. The most important thing is actually... See, barely see these bubbles. I don't want those bubbles. Those bubbles are gone. I don't want puddles and I don't want bubbles. Those are not good. That wash on my cameras. Yes. <laughs> it's why I typically I'll do like this, but I wanted you guys no, to it's... see what I was doing. Okay. So now we're actually going to leave him alone and we'll come back to him in a few because I do need this to be, if you put it on there, it's too dark and you don't get it off like I just did of like, just get your brush wet, wipe it away. If you're like, oh crap, I waited too long, let it completely drop. <laughs> Set it down. We're going to let him completely dry and we'll come back to him. Okay. So we're going to come back to this for a minute. Same way says the missing finger is a battle scar. Yes. Right? Yes. It, it has scarred my soul. <laughs> so you can see that our green has dried, right? So now, I'm going to get a really bright green. Back up a little bit so they can, because I'm, I'm trying to make sure you guys see my palette. Because there's a lot of things when I'm actually painting, there's a lot of things happening on my palette and on my, my mess of doom here. This is why when I start painting, I have five or six paper towels. I've got the little little half sheet ones and I fold them in half and they're all individual here so that I can literally oh I lied they're all folded up individually so I can okay you know I've I've killed this one I throw it away and I move on but I'll take it and I'll flip it over and I'll turn it right side out I can use it for quite a while but eventually I do kill them and then I just pitch that one and I move on to my next one all right so now we've got our green can't get to the one damn paintbrush that I want. We've got our dark green in there, right? So now I'm going to take my lighter green and I basically, I've got just a tiny bit of paint on there and I'm going to sploosh. Because this particular paint is so thin, I'm probably going to do it more than once. But this just, and this is, I'm going over the same areas that I've already gone on. And you'll see me typically hit my finger or hit something else first before I hit my actual model because I'm testing to make sure that I've got, I'm testing to make sure the paint's going to do what I want it to do. 
You know what I mean? Rather than trying it on my model first. So this, this paint is fairly thin. That's one of the reasons I like Army Painter so much. It is going to take more than one coat to get the effect that I want in the areas that I want it. But I'd rather do multiple coats than go too much on the first go, which is really where, where I started painting is it was too much at once. And you know what? While we're here, clean my brush. And I'm going to pick up some of this brown that is starting to dry out on me. So I'll just add a little bit of more water in it. This is where having a wet palette, that wouldn't have happened. My paint would still be just as liquid as when I had just put it on the, the palette. And I am going to turn my little handle of my sword here into wood. And this is wet blending, since we're on the subject of paint. Working very, very quickly to get the two colors to blend on the model itself. Nope, the white is dead. So is that. I tend to not talk when I'm wet blending. <laughs> It's such a small area that you really want it, you need the paint to stay wet as long as possible. So you just have to work super, super fast. And we still have some of this silver. Technically gunmetal gray. Hit the sword. And because it's all around this stone, don't I could dry brush it like we did the other one, but all I'm doing is going along and touching like this. So that I still have some areas that are darker. But I don't dry brush and hit the stone and mess up the stone. I'm pretty happy with the stone. All right, we have waited long enough that our green, our jungle green, that bright green, should be good to add a little bit more to. That's another thing about putting on these really thin layers. They dry pretty quick. This time I'm literally just polka dotting it. Because it's a natural thing that happens. It's, it's not going to be perfect. It doesn't need to be perfect when you're painting it. Oh, and a lid to a, um, a pill bottle with sticky tack. So that gives me the ability to hold it like this. My new paint or my new uh, things like this are currently printing. I should have them by Saturday, according to the man printing them. Yeah, they should be done tomorrow night. It'd be rainbow. It'd be awesome. we go we've got a mossy base and the only other thing is painting the sand on there and that base is done now oh found one of them <laughs> this <sighs> behind the water <laughs> these two 
do exactly what I just did, but better. Um, I love base work, Sam. I honestly, it is my favoriteest thing ever. I can spend 15 minutes on a on a model and two hours on a base and be perfectly content. Okay, so we did all of that on those two. So on this side, we're going to use just these two, right? And I paid $6.50 for these two bottles, or for each bottle, at a, uh, what do you call them, a uh, hobby store uh, for trains and models and stuff like that. And I did that when we went to... Davenport, Iowa? Yeah. What so how long ago was that at NerdFest? Oh, uh, last, last year. It's been a while. And I'm not even halfway done with these bottles. So there's my green. Why well, says I ordered the porous bases for my halfling mini. Nice. I love those forest theme bases. So that's the green is done. And now what we were doing with the brighter greens, I'm going to do with this. Moss and that word. See it. Lichen. Oh, lichen. And again, I'll put it on there and I'll dab with my finger. Sometimes I'll just put it on there. It's all about what you like. And that's why I bought these two. Love, love, love these two paints. So, base other than sand, and realistically, it could just be done. I'm actually very happy with it. One of the things that I like to do when they have these decorative writings around it, I like to go and highlight all of those, but that's not what today is about. I'm focusing. All right, so this guy is dry. So, how do we fix it? I, uh, an exorcism because the Halloween and he clearly been possessed. He was evil to Where begin with, and he was possessed. That way, you were going for dry brush. Oh, dry. That was my next guess with dry brushing. Oh, that is something I do want to point out. <laughs> if... It's with fire, says Sam Wise. <laughs> no, don't do that. <laughs> um, one of the things that I, I do want to point out, dry brushing and a wet palette. Think about the words you're saying. They don't work. No. You're going to wet palette, wet palette. If you're going to dry brush, put it on a different spot. So. We're simply going to come back over. What did you do? I'm dry brushing. Oh, so you're... Basically, just wiping it off now without water. No, I'm not wiping it off at all. It's dry. It's I'm going over the top of the wash with another color. With an with a gray color. Oh, see, my mind was stuck on now. You have to remove some of this, but I think no. I see you're just adding another layer. We're just adding another layer because we've done thin layers. The same way slowly puts the lighter away. Fire is how we got into this problem. <laughs> so no, we can simply, if we hadn't been able, if we put on too thick, we made it too dark, we didn't like how it looked, because we did all of our paints thinly, we can go over it again. If we just glob the ever-living crap out of it, we're going to lose the detail if we go over it again. Uh, creep says, night, guys. Have a great night. You too. Night. Thanks for hanging out, Creepshow. So, oh, that was a scary sound, wasn't it? Yeah, I looked. I'm like, oh no, okay, it's fine. It, it, you guys probably didn't hear it was a little snapping sound or whatever, but it was just catching on the brush. So that was our ash gray. Now I'm gonna. Yeah, Sam White says now. Now that you say it, repainting is so obvious. Yeah, I wasn't even. My mind wasn't going there. No. <laughs> 
obvious. It. And I'm like, it's so funny because how long have you sat next to me watching me freaking paint? And you didn't, like, I'm just going to dry brush over it. So now I have my white again. It was so dark. I mean, the, the lighter sounded like the most reasonable option I thought, but, or the exorcist, fill it down with. Regina says, what do you do if you get too thick and hate how it's looking? Is that where the lighter comes in? That's where, <laughs> that's where a lighter comes in. Uh, if you are too thick, it depends on your material. So if you haven't clear coated it, there is a legitimate option to wash the paint off. Um, being a 3D printer, if I get too thick and I don't like it, ooh, and I print it again, <laughs> I just realized I had a pallet sitting on it. Um, so it, it all depends on the situation. If it's, if it's really just not going well. Um, file 13 is the same wise. Yep. I have to be super, super soft. You don't break another finger. So I don't break another finger. So. I'm actually trying to be soft because I beyond the finger thing. I am on white. But I want these spikies on his head to be really bright. Gina says, maybe I'll post in Discord for comments and suggestions. Yeah, it's, it's one of those... Uh, sorry, I, I got distracted. You can try to wash off the paint even though it is dry. If you use a, a nice big soft brush. Um, and you can get hot soapy water. And kind of let's see. So this is dry, it's fairly thin, but if you take this is just straight water, but you can kind of scrub, you see. And I'm just going back in more for more water. If I had a little bit of soap, but I don't have any soap over here, you can see how the paint's kind of starting to come off. So you can pull some of that paint off and get back into the detail level. If you've clear coated it, you definitely, you can run into some trouble with getting that paint off. Um, I think if you have ideas to what Regina was saying, go ahead and post them in there. Oh yeah, absolutely. Post. I'm just, I'm share them. working on that same thought process. Uh -huh. uh, but you can see I've, I've gotten some of that brown off fairly quickly. With just straight water, I do recommend a soft brush, a soft, patient hand. If you're super frustrated with this model, set it down and walk away and do something else. Uh, don't ever try to, to really just beat the ever-living crap out of it when you're frustrated. Use a finger. <laughs> uh SKD asks, the wash should go only where you want it. You do not want it to go on another part of the model? Uh, for me, there's times where I will literally do the entire model. Most of the time, yes. I will have a wash that I want to put on this guy and a wash that I want to put on his skirt and I will keep those separate. For this particular model, the same black wash that I used on his body is exactly what I would use on his skirt as well. Because it's all in that same tone. So you can see how we kind of brought him back to life. Mm -hmm. He still has... And the beautiful thing about this is, even though we went really, really dark with it, because it's a really thin paint, and we were dry brushing then washing and then dry brushing he's got multitude of tones going on he's got straight up black he's got gray he's got light gray he's got dark gray he's got white 
So he actually looks really good. Yeah. Um, so, you know, sometimes accidents work out really well in your favor. Other times, you maybe need to wash them the paint off. Gamewise asks, would nail polish remover peel off paint or would that destroy the mini's resin? I would be concerned about putting acetone on resin. Uh, we use 99% isopropic alcohol to wash the uncured resin off. If I literally took this model, which is resin printed, and put it in alcohol and just let it sit, it'll eat it. Eat it up. It, it will literally dissolve it. it. It won't happen in 10 minutes. It'll happen in days. That's never happened to us, though. Uh, I did leave. I'm just kidding. Of course okay. it's happened to us. Yes, it's happened to us. I was like, no, I, I, I did that. In the beginning, I did that. I forgot some in the wash bucket, and it dissolved half the mini off in days, not hours, not minutes, anything like that. So for me, I would not want to use acetone on resin i've never put them on there i don't know what the chemical reaction would be so i kind of liken it to putting bleach and ammonia together don't do that <laughs> unless you look up what the chemical reaction would be don't do it i'm the type of person i'll push the button see what happens yeah. don't mix chemicals just not an okay thing ever uh what if you so, I almost said your real name. <laughs> uh, SK wants to know, what if the other part is another color you did not want to wash and you get it on there by mistake? It's the same thing as whenever we put the wash on here too dark. So, let's go to, let's go to her because she's got the different tones. So. I saw it coming. <laughs> it got me. <laughs> Regina, that got me. So we're going to use, let's see, all of, nope, my black is good. Okay. Wasn't sure if I still had any wash over here. So let's say we wanted to put the black wash on her hair and it gets on her armor down here, right? So we're, you know, la, 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 oh, crap. It's the same thing. When you see it happen, get your water. Another nice thing to have. The Q-tip. I was going to say, I bet you use Q-tip for that. And you can just wash it right off. I mean, it's... This, these are all acrylic paints. They're all water-soluble. So the big difference is going to be if you use, you know, oil paints, that's not going to work. But these are acrylic paints. She's going to have dark hair now. So I'm just going to finish putting the black on here. Um, so again, you know, I get it on there, wash my brush, use my water, use my paper towel, use a Q-tip. I even take my Q-tips and dip them in the water and it just, it pulls it right off. Even the stuff that's a little bit dried, like I said, you can, you can take it off if you're gentle you won't pull the paint from underneath. That's, that's the key, is you want to be gentle with it. So plenty of mistakes happen, and if you're patient and careful, you can catch those mistakes and fix them while they're happening. Okay. Or apparently always go back with a lighter. No, I mean with the, the paint again. <laughs> Something went flying, but I don't know what. So I'm going to take a sip of my coffee. And I know there were other specific questions that I had come leading up to this, and I'm trying to remember some of them at the moment. Mm. I do remember one was, how do we use vomit? Mm, yum. So, in order to use the vomit, I have to have something ready for the vomit, which is where he came in. Because wouldn't it be really cool to have, like, coming out of his mouth so I need to paint his teeth so something like the vomit is a finishing touch so you what you want to do is make sure you have everything else done before you do that it's going to be one of the last things you do 
Eyes over there just typing away. Just making notes. So funny when he's... While I'm here, I'm going to add another layer of white to his eyeball. So feel free to ask any other questions while I'm prepping this guy for his vomitous amount of stuff. Yeah, I didn't realize you were going to use the vomit on him talking about it. So... Contrast paints, which I will be coming back to. Contrast paint is the Citadel version of what Army Painter calls speed paints, which I think is a more appropriate name because that realistically is exactly what it is. It is a way to get done quick. So, we're actually, that's what I'm going to use her for, is to show that. Or well, you're going to use speed paints on her? Uh, I'm going to use contrast paint on her, because oh. the speed paints are actually in my office. Uh, it's, again, they are, they do the same job. Citadel calls it, oops. See, there you go, guys. I just hit his face with white, and I don't want it on there. So I'm going to wash it away with a different brush. Done. Done. Um, Citadel calls it contrast paint. And Army Painter calls it speed paint. The only difference between those two things is the brand that makes them. I think more people prefer the Citadel versions to the Army Painter version. I don't know that I exactly have a preference from brand between the two brands. I think they both work really well. Okay. So what color eyes should he have? Eye, not eyes. Oh, you know me. I like the white zombie eye. But... Well, I know, but I have to do the eye first. Oh. I'm going to do the zombie eye. I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to do that effect because it works really well. And it uses a contrast paint. So, two birds, one stone. But I need to give him an eye first. Uh, I don't know. What do we think? Green? Done a green eye before? Blue and... Yeah, we'll do a green. Okay. So, a couple of things. And th another reason I wanted to do something very large. So when I do something that has a face like that, I am going to get out my detail brush. I'm here, my little man. I am going to get out my detail brush that does this. Point. And I'm going to do the eye before I do her skin tone. And this is where I settle. I'm yelling at Ty Come to roll. <laughs> not bump things. Now you can see, I've obviously gone way more than what her eyeball is. But that's why I do this portion before her skin tone. Because it is much easier for me and everyone's different, to come back with her skin and clean that area up. But this way, I can take... She's going to get a green eye, too. You know what? I don't... Hang on a second. Okay. And there, there's... I want to show the two differences in the eyes, okay? Technically, there would be three differences. So, what I'm going to do with her, you see how it's balled up 
not even at the tip of my brush. I don't want that. I want it right at the tip of my brush. I'm literally going the dot, the color. their eye it is really hard to see that against the white it is it is so we're going to maybe i should have said blue <laughs> yeah we'll do blue on her because it, it really is you can't see that green shake the bottle first um so I hate doing tiny eyes. <laughs> what we're going to do is what I like to do. Put that on my finger so that I can go boop. Blue. Take two. Okay. Now, once that is dry, it should only take a moment to find my black. Black up. Again, dotting on my skin, not my skin, but there. This helps me to flip it upside down for the other eye. She's a little cross-eyed. <laughs> like, not a little, she's very cross-eyed. And this is why I do the eyes before I do the skin. Okay. Now. That looks hideous. But here's the beautiful part. We're gonna go barbarian flesh. It is very pink. I'm sticking with that same brush because details. Not going to talk while I'm doing detail. I was playing with the zoom and I figured I should probably back out a little bit in case. <laughs> so that horribly sloppy eye became cleaned up. Again, because I'm right hand dominant, flipping her over gives me better access to her eye. Some people who are on stream currently are smart by large volume. 
Regina says, so you don't want any sudden sounds right now. No, this is usually when everyone starts playing them, <laughs> Regina. <laughs> I was kind of sitting here waiting, too. So. Face looks a little bit weird still because she has no eyebrows. <laughs> Made me jump too. <laughs> um, <laughs> a semi says, "See, you're expecting it, so it isn't fun." And yet, <laughs> as if on cue. <laughs> so. That's basically how I clean up the eye. Now, that is a small eye. A super ridiculously tiny eye. Take out, says Sam Wise. Or, like, this guy. Character size many. I know you can't see it. But basically what he got was white. Black dot, done. Not doing anything more than that. Alexa. Apparently, Alexa thought we were talking yeah. to them. So something like this, where he's wearing that mask, so all I have is that tiny little area in there. All I am going to do is stop talking. Put a dash of white. His character minis are too damn small for eyes. A black pupil. That's all he's getting. He got white and black done. Not doing anything else with something that is that tiny. Regina agrees. I just ignore eyes on tinies, really. One of the things that you can do to ignore the eye on a really, really tiny mini is do the eyebrow. Then you've addressed this area and it's not just flesh. And you can almost bring the eyebrow down slightly lower than what it should be. And it gives that hooded eye look, which makes it to where it looks like you've done it. It's just too tiny to tell. So it's okay. But... You're getting, getting all the drops now. I know. I'm getting the droppy drops. Okay. Now, on an eyeball like that, we can have some fun. So, first thing, I need my, my other green. Sometimes I can put it on when I can. All right. So, his eye is obviously... Partially closed. So his eyeball, you know, his, his iris would be kind of like that area. So I'm going to pick my area. I thought I just hit it with my thumb, but I just... Now... The crazy thing is, there are people who do this on character minis. Those people I call gods. <laughs> MY says, I'm going to save to the alter, alter the stream and demand a googly eye on one of these pumpkins. <laughs> God. I don't even think you need to save up for that. I would just do it anyway. <laughs> it's funny how, I mean, the eye's not done, but just adding that bit already has added so much to the face. Yeah. So now I'm going to add my lighter green to the center. Because if you look at an eye, the iris itself is a dark circle 
of usually the same color. Some people are special and have multiple colors. Yeah. I have shit brown eyes. But I have a dark ring of brown and then a lighter br uh, ring. You know, my iris itself is lighter. So that's the look I'm going for. The center obviously doesn't matter because I'm going to put the pupil in there. But then what I like to do is take that detail brush again, go back into my, you know what? We've got the blue here. We're going to play around. I'm going to add the blue in there. And this is all wet, so I get to do the wet blending. Blue is not showing up. Oh, yes, it is. But basically, I'm, you know, in an Irish, you've got the, the lines. That's what I'm adding. I think the, the dark green is, even though I want to play with the blue, the dark green is showing up. I'm just going back and forth between the light green and the dark green. But there are actually people who do this tiny mint. And I don't understand, comprehend anything how the they do it. MY says, too bad most dragon minis are still too small to do a badass dragon eye. Yeah. Yes, it is disappointing. Okay. That's true, because this, like, this pumpkin is bigger than most dragon heads. Yeah. Now, the iris. No, the pupil. Sorry. That was the iris. So the fun thing is that the new resolution, this looks better than it has, but still going to need to take pictures because it still doesn't look quite as good as it does on the stream. It doesn't quite look as good as it actually looks in person. Now we're going to... Yeah, pretty. pretty. Now, my most favorite is part of an eyeball. <laughs> Glitch in the matrix. <laughs> Sam White says, people who can do this on a character mini are a glitch in the matrix. That's how. Okay. That repeating black cat. <laughs> that actually has to wait a minute. I need that to dry. Um, I do want to take a little bit of my soft tone, which was what we used on the the wood. On the shield, yeah. On the shield. And what I'm going to do... Turn my thing around here. I know I've like made this big mess. So, nice and thin. What I want to do while I'm waiting for that to dry. Just kind of go around the gums. And this gives that dirty tooth look. Like gingivitis, sort of. Just kind of dabbing it away. Shut up, Tyler, and don't. Don't want it. Not touching anything, man. <laughs> that the word dab. You did? Shouldn't have pointed it out. Didn't, didn't notice, sorry. I was laughing because you said the pumpkin has gingivitis. And I'm like, is that because it's 
plant. It has gingivitis instead of gingivitis. <laughs> no, I just mispronounced the word because I'm tired. <laughs> So I like to do this with a lot of monster minis. I like the way it looks. I, I don't like them having pearly whites. It's sort of like the same thing what we were talking about with the she or with the weapon, where the part that gets used the most, the t the tips of the teeth are nice and bright white, but down here in the gums, they don't brush, so they shouldn't be all beautiful pearly. Samwise says, mmm, ginger pumpkin tea. <laughs> and I'm going to use the same tone to add a couple of shadows on this, uh, this piece up here because I hadn't actually done it yet. So I am letting it pool right here because I intend to guide it into these areas. Okay. That eye is still very. <laughs> Might have to put him down and come. But now his teeth look a little dirty. Actually, you know what? His. Because his teeth are done and he's done, we can actually use the vomit, which was the point of this guy. So. Give me a second to find the other one. Not have it. Already on the desk. This one I always seem to have trouble finding. Okay. Well, it's called Nurgle's Ride. I knew that's what you were looking for. <laughs> well, they they do the same job. But I don't know where the other one is. Uh, again, different. Uh, different uh, Nurgle rot is done by Citadel, but this behaves the same way. So again, this is an effect paint. So it looks a lot like normal kind of paint. Oh, shit. me. And you can see this now really well now that it's dried. The green lichen dries really kind of a deep green, which is what I was mixing the other one to make it. What? Lichen. Your lichen. <laughs> uh, I had to mix the other one to make it this nice deep green. Um, so this side is the side that I just used regular paints and mixed what I liked. And then this is the side where I used those two weather effects. I love these guys. Highly recommend. So... Anyway, so the way you use this is, yeah, glob it on. So where you put it. I think I'd be good at this. I mean, all I ever do is glob on. Where you put it. And usually what I do with this is I apply it more than once. So I'll kind of. Pile it on where it goes. It's working well. <laughs> and then the thicker it is, obviously the longer it takes it to, to dry. But what you want to do is put it on, let it, you know, rip and drool and do its you know, cause it to, to do that because that's what it's supposed to do. It's, it's nastiness. Um, but then you want to come back when it's dry and like, was I just doing all of that off camera? No. Okay, good. Because I looked up and it was off no, camera. You were like, Son of a bitch. So 
what I'm going to do is all of this that's coming down is good. It's done, right? But what I'll do is once it's dry, I'll come back and add it to like this thicker area to make it globier because it'll it'll stack on top of itself basically. <laughs> so now he's vomitous. Mm -hmm. Yes, he okay. is. His eye is dry enough to do the last effect that I like to do on big eyeballs. One of my big tips for your paintbrush, when you want to point on it, get it wet, take it, and twist it along when you're dragging it back, and it will help get the point back on it. This particular effect, I need a good sized area that I can literally just use a single dot, not a lot. I'm going straight in my just my white. And a little bit bigger. A Q-tip for this size would work as well. Not a Q-tip. Not a Q-tip. Toothpick. Oh. I was looking at I thinking, mean, that's the size of the pupil. Just a dot. Now we have a highlight from the light. So, Mr. Angry Pumpkin... And all his pukiness is done. Because that's literally, that's as simple as the puke is, that's it. That's all you do with it. Um, the other one, Nurgle's Rot, looks a little bit different, but it behaves the same way. It does the same job. It's just a different, slightly different shade of green. It's more pussy green, right? It's a more pussy green. <laughs> he barfs by feet. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. Too. I ate too much. But see how that little dot just makes it to look like, you know, he's got the eye shine, right? So there, he is finished. And <laughs> sorry, okay, I'm too. I can't help it. Okay, so the other thing I wanted to do. Where is my flesh wall? There it is. So this is a skin wash. <laughs> my mic. <coughs> what time is it? It mm, quarter till ten. Wow! I thought I'd be on for about an hour. I have been on way freaking longer than I thought, and I could go on for another like three hours. Probably. Okay, okay so, so I'm not going to cover nearly anything else that I meant to cover. But hey, I've gotten a lot done. We can do another one of these in November. Yeah. So, flush wash. Again, it's a wash, so it's super thin. This one, I do want to be light, because I like him light-skinned light like this. Because um, it's going to make that metal pop off of him even more. So I am going to add some of my clean water to this to thin it down some. Sam White said, yeah, it's almost 11 here. Might need to go soon. Yeah, we, yeah, we I'm going to literally brush this on and I'm going to be done. But thank you for hanging out. Yes, I did not intend to go on this late. I thought it was like, I, I was like, you know, an hour max and we'll be done. Nope. All right. So I like to, when I'm unsure of how it's going to look, I like to start in an area that is a little bit hidden. So I can go like, okay, yeah, that's going to work. Another reason that having a Q-tip handy is I can get rid of those bubbles.
So he's got those puddles happening. I can just peel them off. That was really weird to say it that way. But all that work that we did with the highlights, it's going to show through this. You can already see it happening down here uh -huh. where those spots are still much brighter and still really well highlighted. Yeah, I can dab it away with my finger. I can do... I've got a lot of control with with having multiple tools at my disposal right here. If I add a little bit too much, it makes it to where it takes a little bit longer to dry and I can pull it back up easier. I love this model. Uh huh. This is by Dragon Trappers, by the way. Hopefully you guys can hear that. I know you can't see it because I pull it off camera, but I'm literally... So I'll get, like, that little veiny area. And I'm just blowing it out of... Of that spot where I maybe not can't reach... Maybe can't reach it with this. I'm thinking they cannot hear it. At least it didn't look like it. I'm blowing on it. I know you can see it, so. But because this has, this flesh wash kind of has a red tone to it, it's immediately helping with the soreness of the look that this area gets, where these spikes are coming up out of his skin. That's one of the reasons I wanted to pick this tone, this ink, because of the red tone it has to. And because I have that blue out, I will work on his veins too before we go. But again, I've got those bubbles. I can just get my brush washed a little bit, pull some of that tone off. Even though it's starting to dry, it's still easily fixed because it's a water-based paint, which is awesome. I want it to be thicker on these areas because of, like I said, it, it adds to that really tender skin look. But I'm not trying to only go into, you see, when you let it, oops, see, got onto his pants. Wipe it off. When you let it cool, you'll get this line. So then I need to kind of scrub. I have to get a different brush, I think. This is where a harder brush works better. But even though that was dry, I was able to kind of pull it up. Now I'm going to be super, super careful. And I'm going into the stronger tone of it and putting it right around these areas. Where those... And they, they, they will be um, painted to look like metal. But that, like I said, adds to that sore, like this is really tender skin, damaged skin sort of thing, you know? As it would be, a piece of metal coming up out of you. Yup.
I'm just kind of pulling away from that area to kind of blend it out. Okay. Now, the only other trick that I'm going to show tonight is the veins. So I'm going to take that same blue that I was using for her eyes. And her face looks so funky right now, I'm going to tell you. Because <laughs> it's not finished? Because it's not finished. It's like half painted. <laughs> I'm going to water it down quite a bit. It almost looks like a wash. It's super, super thin. Because I want to see the flesh under the flesh tone underneath. But I want to add highlight of that blue because that's what veins do. Kind of look blue. Detail work. SKD says, great time tonight. Learned a lot. Thank you. Last question. Where did mm -hmm. you get the ash gray paint that you used on the monster? Mm -hmm. It is a very light gray, correct? Yes. That is from Army Painters, and it's on Amazon. That is, remember I was telling you I bought that big set of paint? That was one of the paints that came in that set. Uh, this, a Timeless Gray from Apple Barrel, or yeah, Apple Barrel, is actually extremely close to it. So I'm not painting every single part of the vein. I'm just picking a few little spots to highlight. SKD asks, would granite gray even be lighter? Uh, I don't remember. I think granite gray is actually a little darker. But if you use the granite gray, if I remember right, it's a little darker. But you can lighten it up with a little bit of, of white. Looking for other veins. Yeah. But you can see how just adding a little bit of blue, I still see the flesh tone underneath it. It's a nice thin blue. I like how sore all that looks, too. Let's say my metal is still not dry. On the axe? No, on my palette. Oh. So you can see, basically, I'm coming from the top and just pushing down. So this will kind of coat one side of the spike. Skitty says, when I primed my special models I told you about was with perfect gray, but seems uh, they do not have that in acrylic. I still think that that gray will work for what you're wanting to do. Um, something that we've talked about before. So I think if you use that gray to prime, you can then do exactly the same thing that we did with this guy and get the look that you were asking me. I'm just hitting these real quick so we can kind of show the basic look that it. Is. 
So kind of see how they're metallic looking. And really quickly, we've got the blue veins going. You know, we spent a lot of time doing this highlights on his skin, but everything else comes together really quickly. So it's one of those like, yeah, you spend a lot of time getting those highlights and then you put the wash all over it, but those highlights still show. And it just leads, you know, he's got all these sore spots. He's got these highlights. He's got these veins. You know, he's, he's looking pretty good pretty quick. So I think we are going to call it for tonight because this is way later than I meant to be. <laughs> okay. Well, a uh, couple of things. We're going to be back Saturday and we'll be back Sunday again. Saturday we'll be painting. Sunday we'll be painting and crowd forging. Yes. Uh, we do have changes coming to our content. We're making plans for all of that right now. So let you guys know when those changes come about and what the new content is and what changes might happen. We're not going to be multi-streaming anymore, but this will still end up on YouTube. I just have to get it uploaded out there. Um, so you'll still be able to go back and reference this. One other thing I do want to talk about. Mm -hmm. Because this is actually pretty important, especially this is like a great example. Matte varnish versus gloss varnish. So a pumpkin is a very dry thing, right? They're, they don't have shiny skin. So we take our matte varnish and it's going to go on like this. It looks like white. So you see it like this. It'll dry perfectly clear. And I'm not going to do the whole thing. But his skin is all going to be this matte varnish. And what it'll do is it'll look... It, it will look like this. Dry and, and, and everything else, right? But then we take the gloss varnish. Which... Warhammer, or, um, no, this is Army Painter. It actually is clear right now, but the Vallejo version of this looks frosty like the other one, but again, it dries clear. So what we want to do is take our gloss varnish, and you can look and see his eye is not shiny. I mean, it's a little shiny, but it's not wet looking, which eyes are wet, right? So everywhere in here, all of this where our eye would be Blinking and tearing and everything else. Oh, I was going to do the zombified eye on here. I forgot, Ty. That's I'm pretty happy with the eye. I know I said that. Um, we can do something with the zombified eye when we do that. Yeah. That, and then... Yep, that's dry. All on his teeth. And all where he would drool. That wet look everywhere. Give it that wet look all on his mouth and the drool. So then his eye, now you see how it's really shiny. It will stay shiny like that. So that's something that a big difference between drying up and looking dry and drying up and still staying moist looking. It'll be a big difference between that eye and the rest of the pumpkin. And it just makes it to where it looks wet all the time. And it's awesome. So varnish, especially model, like if you're going to take a model and you're going to set it on the shelf and leave it, you're fine. It should be fine. But if you're going to play with this model, the more you touch it, the more likely it is that paint's going to come off. So you need to clear coat your playable models. Absolutely, you need to clear coat them and just protect your work. Right. So. I knew he was going to be a blast to paint, and I am loving him so much. Anyway. We're out because I did not mean to be on this long. I literally, I should have, I should have told you to 
I should have time checked way more often, and I didn't. <laughs> I didn't. More I than didn't. more than one time. One time. One time. What one time. do you mean by more? <laughs> so I hope this was helpful. Um, I definitely think next time we'll go into some more advanced tricks, um, and we'll just keep growing together. Yeah. Yeah. Night, guys. Keep folks. <laughs>